Our last speaker for the session is Morit Flasher from ETH Zurich, and he'll be presenting his work on automatic model selection and calibration for studying the macroscopic behavior of different materials under mechanical, different mechanical loads. Hello, my name is Moritz Flaschel. Uh, I'm a PhD student at the Computational Mechanics Group at ETH Zurich. And today I would like to talk about how to discover constitutive laws uh, in computational solid mechanics. The general objective in computational solid mechanics is to simulate the behavior of solid bodies under external loading. To do so, one typically solves boundary value problems. And one very important ingredient to such boundary value problems is the uh, materials characteristic constitutive law, which describes the stress strain relation in the material. The constitutive law is typically associated with a lot of uncertainties. As for different materials, one has to choose different constitutive laws, and the choice is not always clear. Uh, therefore, the goal of our project is to discover constitutive laws from data. And this task is um, particularly challenging as the stress strain relation of the material might be very complex and even path dependent. Uh, the constitutive, constitutive law has to further um, fulfill physical requirements, such as, for example, being thermodynamically consistent. And a further challenge is that we have limited access to stress data from experimental observations. Before I talk about our method, I would like to talk about data-driven constitutive modeling in general. So the classical approach uh, of constitutive modeling is to choose a material model with a small number of parameters and calibrate those parameters based on some given data. The advantage of this classical approach is that one obtains very simple models. However, due to the, the, due to the assumptions that we make on the material model, we introduce some modeling errors, um, which um, leads to a bad fitting accuracy in some cases. And for this reason, in recent years, um, machine learning based methods became more and more popular in constitutive modeling, such as, for example, surrogating material models with neural networks or bypassing the formulation of material models altogether and running forward problems that are directly informed by the data. The advantage of such approaches is that we have a high flexibility in describing the material behavior and we do not introduce any modeling errors. However, the disadvantages are that um, first, a lot of stress strain data pairs are typically required for the state of the art machine learning methods. Uh, which makes these methods uh, supervised. And second, um, the methods typically have a black box type nature and it's very difficult to physically interpret those uh, material models. And for these reasons, um, we propose the method that we um, named Euclid, standing for efficient unsupervised constitutive law identification and discovery. And the objective of Euclid is uh, to run a deformation experiment of a given material and to measure the full field displacements, for example, by applying digital image correlation and to further measure the reaction forces. And based on these data, um, to find constitutive laws as closed form mathematical expressions. The key features of this method are that we don't want to assume any stress data to be known within the um, bulk material. And further, we want to find uh, constitutive laws as closed form mathematical expressions, which enables a physical interpretability of the discovered material model. Our first application was on hyperelastic uh, strain energy densities, and our second uh, application was for plastically deforming material behavior. In hyperelasticity, we typically assume that there is no um, dissipation when the material is deformed. However, the material may deform uh, under very large deformations. The hyperelastic material behavior is characterized by the material's characteristic strain energy density function. And we here assume that the strain energy density function can be expressed as a linear combination of so-called strain features, which are nonlinear functions of the strain invariance, and so-called um, 
a material parameters. And um, the idea here is to choose a very uh, large catalog of features such that a, ver a large variety of different material behaviors can be described. And the goal is now not only to calculate the unknown material parameters, but also to select which features are really important to describe the material behavior. To do so, we make use of the balance of linear momentum, which works as a linear constraint on the material parameter space. And in particular, we minimize the internal forces at the free uh, nodes in our test domain, as well as the differences between the global reaction force and the sum of internal forces at the boundary. If we would just minimize these two terms, um, we would um, obtain a dense solution vector theta, which would result in a very uh, complex material model. And therefore, we additionally introduce a sparsity regularization term to our minimization problem, which pr promotes sparse solution vectors and hence simple um, material models. Finally, I would like to show some results for the case of hyperelasticity. Here I am showing the strain energy density functions of uh, some true material models and the strain energy density functions that we discovered by applying our method. And we can see that there is a good agreement in the mathematical expressions for the true and discovered strain energy density functions. And we can also see when we plot the strain energy densities uh, that there is a good agreement between the true and discovered strain energy densities. In the case of plastically deforming materials, we cannot anymore assume that there is no uh, dissipation. In plasticity, um, the material uh, deforms uh, plastically after reaching some stress level. Um, this material behavior is characterized by the material's characteristic yield function f, which indicates after which stress level um, the plastic deformation occurs. And if we assume isotropic homogeneous material behavior, the yield function can be expressed as a function of three uh, principal stress invariants. And if we further assume um, pressure and sensitivity and apply a coordinate transformation to the principal stress space, um, the yield function can be expressed as a function of only two stress invariants. And the goal is now to use the data to discover these yield functions. The literature reports a variety of different yield surface shapes. However, we do not want to assume any specific shape a priori, but we want the algorithm to find out the shape. And therefore, we introduce a Fourier expansion of the yield surface such that we can describe arbitrarily shaped yield surfaces. And again, the goal is not only to calculate the unknown parameters in our ansatz, but also to select which modes in this Fourier expansion are really important to describe the data. Here, I would also like to show some results. Uh, here we can see um, uh, Euclid applied to simulated data with artificial noise, and we can see that um, in many cases, we can um, discover the uh, true mathematical form of the yield function. And if we also compare the, the yield surface plots for different noise levels, we can see that the true and discovered yield surfaces are in good agreement. Uh, finally, I would like to summarize. Euclid uh, does not use any stress data, which is an advantage as this is typically not available from experiments and it finds constitutive laws as concise mathematical expressions. And uh, we have applied it so far to uh, cases of hyperelasticity and elastoplasticity. In the future, we would like to uh, work on the robustness to noise such that it can be also used uh, in experimental settings. And we would like to generalize the formulation of the model library such that more um, different material behaviors are included. If you are interested, uh, we are uploading all our codes and data to our project website. With this, I'm at the end of the presentation and I would be happy to answer any questions. Thanks so much for that talk. Uh, ready for Q&A session now. And uh, to start off with, uh, I think it's, it's really uh, useful to know that you can actually simulate uh, the stress uh, for different materials. I was wondering, like for your uh, initial validation process, how many uh, different materials did you test this with? And uh, what were some of the challenges that perhaps you can highlight? 
yes, thank you very much for the question. Um, so the first um, experiments were poorly based on artificially generated data. So uh, the project is quite new. So we are focusing on uh, artificial data that we have generated through finite element simulations. And we are now currently working on um, the experimental validation of the method. And here we have to um, consider different materials, of course, and we have to um, uh, we have to be careful with the choice of the model library, that is all the models that we uh, consider in our assumptions. Um, so if the true material behavior is not part of the search space, we might have problems in deriving the, um, the material model and then we have to increase the feature library. Uh, but yes, for now the experimental validation uh, is open, but the first uh, results on uh, uh, simple tensile tests uh, were quite promising. Awesome, that's great. There are a lot of uh, interesting questions coming up, so I'll just go with those. Uh, the first one is, do you see this method or its modification can be extended to computational fluid mechanics in the future? Uh, yes. Uh say it's uh, definitely possible. Uh, it, the question is um, in which uh, regime uh, you want to find uh, constitutive models. For example, if the uh, constitutive models are linear in any case, then this method does not make so much sense. But if you have some complicated fluid behavior, for example, some, uh, visco, uh, some viscous fluids or something like this, I think this method could be applied very well um, in this field. Thanks so much for that. A uh, related one is, uh, I wonder whether your method can be applied for non-homogeneous materials as well. Uh, yes, the question is there um, on what assumptions we make. For example, if we take full field measurements of some uh, heterogeneous material, we could, for example, assume that there are two materials inside, and then we could uh, try to find two material models and uh, minimize the same cost functions as we did in the uh, previous approach. I think that would be uh, also possible. Awesome, thanks so much. Uh, one last question says, great talk for the finite element analysis. Uh, how do you choose your mesh to reduce computational cost and especially around edges? Uh, so here we didn't do any um, um, computational cost optimization. We have an in-house uh, finite element code and we have uh, mesh with uh, like high enough degrees of freedom and uh, the, the accuracy is quite well and the run times did not exceed, uh, uh, for example, a day or something like this. So the computational costs were not that high in this uh, two-dimensional examples, of course. Great. Um, that's most of the questions we have. Um, there's one more, but I think this is for the last speaker. Uh, data you can, the data you take can be transformed into graph or networks. I think this is for the last speaker. Yeah, so uh, that's most of it. Uh, I was just also curious to know uh, if these can be applied to any other domains that you might be potentially thinking of other than, um, you know, fluid mechanics and uh, uh, in, in understanding the uh, solid stress details. So are there any other areas or domains that you think this can be potentially applied to? Um, so uh, originally this uh, sparse regression approach uh, was not applied in solid mechanics, but in dynamics. Um, but here the problem is a little bit more simpler because we have uh, um, um, labeled data pairs there. Uh, so um, we can learn a one-to-one -one relation between data pairs. But here really the problem was that we don't have stress and strain data pairs, but we only have the strain in the bulk material and the stresses at the boundary. So um, here we use this uh, method, which was already known in the dy dynamics community, uh, but we applied it to solid mechanics and we solved the issue of the um, lack of data. 
Awesome. That, that sounds uh, quite interesting uh, transition. Thanks so much again for your time. And with that, uh, we also end this session here and uh, we'll hand over back to the main uh, agenda. Thank you so much. Thanks to all the speakers. Thank you.